my friends who, uh, uh, the moment I met this guy, I was like, this fucker's a comedian. <laughs> Like, you're an asshole and you're funny. Together makes a comedian. I don't think that's like the, the equation. Um, but, asshole's a compliment, by the way, Mike. It's okay. Just, just so you know. I am an asshole. It's right. Yeah, you know, at least you know you're an asshole. Um, so, <laughs> obviously. Um, so, I would like to invite him up here. Uh, he actually was here for my first variety show in December. So, uh, and that was his premiere, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, he's going to come up here and... Uh, do his thing. So, Mr. Mike Tiemont. How you motherfuckers out here, huh? Yeah. Isn't that a great word, motherfuckers? Yes. It's the greatest word, because when you're mad, you can use it. When you're happy, you can use it. And, and you can use it toward your dad every day. <laughs> my dad's my favorite motherfucker. I don't know about you, but I'm just a fucker, and I wouldn't be here if that motherfucker didn't exist. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, I'm turning 28 soon, and uh, you know, the, the different times you turn different ages is, is very, uh, like, has different significance. Like, 18, like, you know, you're an adult, you can buy, like, booze and porn. That's always good, right? Or cigarettes and porn, sorry. 21, you can buy booze, legally. 25, you get that good insurance discount, but 28 is like, I'm going to have my 10-year high school reunion. Has anyone done that? Yeah, it's just a chance to get out there and lie to everyone you used to know. They haven't seen you for 10 years? Fuck it, right? Rent a nice car, get a hooker, call your wife. It's all good. I, I think I'm going to do the opposite, though. Everyone's going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing... Uh, I'm just going to degrade myself, like, on my third time out of rehab. <laughs> like, you know, I'm into gay prostitution, and I leave, but my pimp's backhand's too strong. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try and get some pity pussy out of this, of course, but... Everyone's going to be bringing pictures of their kids. And uh, that's, that's the one that, like, they're actually telling the truth. And the reason they're telling the truth is because they're like, look, I got laid. <laughs> See, it's got my nose. Well, mine are the mailman's, but looks like me. I hope there's going to be one person that outdoes me, though. He's going to be homeless or something. You think there's one homeless guy on the planet that actually brags about his job? Being homeless, like he's an optimist. He's sitting there like, yeah, sure, I don't have a home, but uh, you gotta work outside all day, uh, get a drink on the job. Pretty sweet gig. Looking at some of you guys, you're like, shit, I want that job. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people say that I'm a, I'm a cynic or a pessimist, and uh, when, it, when it comes to different issues, I, I'm not either of those. I'm a, I'm a realist. Let me explain the difference between pessimism, cynic, and a realist. A pessimist is someone who sees the world, they look at all the issues, and everything's negative. A cynic is someone who looks at the world, sees everything negative, and tries to find an answer. A realist is someone who sees the world, sees it's fucked up, and enjoys the show. <laughs> it's a lot more fun, let me tell you. And I, I mean, I see things like the, the different issues, gay marriage, don't get why it's an issue, who you fuck in your own space is your own business, um, the only thing I think is, thank you, some slow claps, like, wait, are there Republicans here? Can I, can I clap? Can I clap? Or just, okay. but, but I happen to think that the gay community is kind of screwing up. They have no sex, they can have sex without commitment? Are you kidding me? They, they're fucking up my thing. They're trying to make gay marriage legal. I'm trying to make marriage illegal, okay? I'm sick of this shit. Every time I'm in a relationship, it gets to that point where she goes, well, uh, you know, like, she, I start off, I'm like, listen, I don't want to get married, I don't want to have kids, that's just, that's just me. I let them know up front, I'm pretty honest. And like six months down the road, she goes, so how about that uh, marriage thing, what do you really think? I just wish I had the right excuse. I wish I could go, baby, I'd love to get into a legally binding contract with you. And if we get divorced, I have to pay you alimony for the rest of my life. If we have kids, never get to see them and get to pay you for those two as well. I'd love to do all that. But it's illegal. I think the next step for straight guys to get marriage illegal is just going to be like, no, I want a gay wedding. I want a YMCA. I want the, the village people cover band. I want men and assless chaps. I want it all. I want a gay marriage. You know what they say? <laughs> gay wedding, yeah. But 
straight guys don't think like that. We think wedding and marriage are like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just selling yourself down the river there. <laughs> so, and you know what? The, uh, all the people who are against gay marriage are like, well, if you let the gays get married, next thing you know, the guy's marrying his dog. And then I thought for a minute, I go, I love my dog. <laughs> that bitch does exactly what I tell her to do. She doesn't even care I call her bitch. I mean, at the end of the day, it would be the same as any sexless marriage. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe better. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> She's very trained. I like to screw with people in, like, the, in the real environment. Like, I think life's about having fun any way you can. Like, that's what life's about. Like, I like to, like, mess with strangers. Um, like, try this sometime. Go to the airport. When you're at the airport, get your luggage first. This is very important. Get your luggage. And then you find a happy-looking couple. All right? You find this couple, and then, like, you kind of stare at them like, is that? They're going to look at you eventually. Then you run over to her. You go, excuse me, miss. I just loved you in All That Cock, Volume 3. You were amazing. I got to go. See you later. And you've done something amazing for that marriage. A, he's going to go look it up. No matter how many times she goes, uh, no, no, that never happened. And he's paying for porn and the economy does better. That's always a positive thing. The other thing that could happen is she actually admits to the things she did in college to pay for textbooks. That's honesty. Going green. You, you can go bad with this though too. Like, uh, like the other day, I thought I'd have some fun. I snuck up on this girl, and I got real close. She didn't notice me, and I go, "This is what a rapist sounds like." <laughs> that did not go well for me. Pepper spray right to the face. And then you know, you know, I had to finish it. Like, I had to rape her. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I just go by what my like. Degenerate uncle said, if you're going to act like a rape victim, I'm going to treat you like a rape victim. <laughs> Back to politics. All right. Going green is really big. Everyone's starting to thank you. Going green is like the big thing right now, but it's funny because the greenest companies on earth aren't saying anything about it. All right. It's, it's always like, look at this fluorescent light bulb. It'll save you money and 10 coals. A year. That's what your contribution is, 10 coals. Why don't the real companies that are going green come out? Like abortion clinics. Yeah. People are the reason there's global warming. There should be a line of hippies outside an abortion clinic. Yep, just doing my part for Mother Earth. <laughs> just got taken care of that. Or how about like with, with the, you know, you know what the greenest company in this country is? The army. I can't believe I haven't seen this commercial. They've gone after the extreme people, the people who want a job. How about the hippies? Hey, this should be the commercial for the U.S. Army. We at the U.S. Army have found the cause, number one cause of global warming is human beings. That's why we are eliminating at hundreds a day. <laughs> Going green, saving Mother Earth. GoArmy.com. That should be the commercial right there. GE's symbol should just be two bombs. Fuck the light bulb. They're like, we're taking out hundreds of thousands of motherfuckers at a time. Go green, GE. <laughs> There's a lot of political issues nowadays. Uh, healthcare is one of them. Uh, everyone screams about healthcare. We need to like teach our kids about healthcare in a in a way they can understand. Like, uh, let's take some old nursery rhymes and teach them about healthcare. All right, like let's take Jack and Jill. We got different versions of this. Here's the American version of Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came down kind of slowly because they only have an HMO, and they can't afford the ambulance ride, so she had to get down safely to take him to the, the hospital. When they got to the hospital, they filled out the insurance forms. And because there was a comma missing, they didn't get approved for the insurance. Jack got fucked up, she ended up on welfare, and that's the American dream. That's Jack and Jill. <laughs> That's American Jack and Jill, ladies and gentlemen. Now you want to hear the Canadian version of that story? Jack and Jill went up the hill to get a pail of water. Eh? Jack fell down and broke his crown. 
She called the ambulance, he got fixed up, went to the doctors, and everything was okay. Thank you guys very much. My name is Mike Timont.